folks, if you've used any of my single line fonts, you know that they come in two versions. Both of them are made from the same work file, where each stroke is a single line from the start point, which is this little green arrow, to the end point, the little red arrow. The gray area you see is not part of the character. Font Creator, the program I work in, adds that just to make your strokes easier to see. I export two versions so that these are usable in as many programs as possible. One has the number one in the name. This is the true single line version, but most programs can't use that version because the program tries to close the shape. It puts a straight line between the start point and the end point of every stroke, so you end up with these weird blocky filled shapes. We'll look at those closer in a minute. The other version has the number two in the name. I call this the hairline version. It's technically an outline font, but the outline is microscopically thin. If you can't really see the letters here, don't worry, neither can I. Heck, in some programs, these fonts are completely invisible until you apply a stroke. With the number two version, when you use it with a stylus, like a Glowforge laser engraving tool or this Cricut Joy with a pen, it will go from the start point to the end point and then back up to the start point for each letter. And I know some folks don't like that they need to use the double stroke version because it can make their lines heavier. And let's take a look at some examples written with single line versus double line. First up is Cricut's 0.4 millimeter sketch pen. You can see the double is a little bit heavier. Next is a plain old Sharpie fine point. The double isn't much heavier, but the dots of ink at the ends of each stroke are way heavier in the double. Those dots are gonna happen with any felt tip pen because the pen is pausing for a moment and more ink seeps from the pen into the paper. Last is the fine point of a Tombow dual brush marker. This marker gave me much smaller ink dots at the ends of each stroke, and you can really see the difference in weight between the single and double strokes. So let's take a look at how you use the actual single line version of my sketch fonts here in Inkscape, and we'll make designs where each line is only drawn once. First, here are the two versions of the font side by side. On the left is Spicy Sketcher 1, the single line version. On the right is Spicy Sketcher 2, the hairline version. For both of them, we're gonna turn off any fill and apply a stroke so we can really see what we're working with. And here you can see why version one always shows as filled in. Most programs prefer a vector shape to be completely closed, so it's drawing a straight path between the start point and the end point. Not what we want, but we can work with it. I'll clear out the hairline version so we can concentrate on the single line version. First, I'm going to convert the text to vector outlines so we can make our modifications. To do that, we'll go to the Path menu and select Object to Path. Once your text is in vector format, we can get rid of the extra connecting line. We're basically going to break open the shape right where the line is. Use the Node Selection tool and select both the Start and End nodes. Then click this Break Apart button. The icon is two nodes on a path turning into two separated nodes. And just like that, it breaks the path between those two selected nodes. If a letter has more than one stroke, you'll need to perform this same action for each stroke. We'll do the big shape here first. Same steps as before. Select your two intended endpoints, click the Break Apart button, and the section of path is gone. Straight or nearly straight lines might be a little harder because that additional line connecting the start and end points will overlap. To get a better idea of which part of the shape you want to break open, you can move one of the nodes. If you use your arrow keys to move a node, you can then use the opposite arrow key when you're done, putting that node right back where you found it. Here, I'll arrow down 10 times. Now you can see the full outline. The curved stroke is the one we want to keep, and the straight line connecting the start and end points needs to go. Inkscape has a separate button for breaking apart a path from a single node. Select one of the end nodes, then click this icon. It's a single node on a path, becoming two separated nodes. Once that's broken, you can move one node back to position and delete the other one. Once all of your shapes are split and you've just got single strokes left, you can save your text as an SVG file using your usual settings. File, Save As, and Inkscape's default format is SVG. Perfect! Now I can bring that design into any program that takes SVG files and the text is ready to go. Here I've uploaded the SVG file into Cricut Design Space to test it out. 
Set it for drawing with your pen tool and it's good to go. So now you may ask, isn't it easier to just type out text with the hairline version directly in my machine's software? And yeah, it is. But if you want true single line strokes for the text in your design, whether you're using sketch pens or a foil quill or scoring with a laser, this is a fast and easy way to build text and then import it. And if you're building a single line design in another program anyway, like if you're using other decorative elements, then it's just a few extra clicks to have true single line text to go along with your design. I hope this helps open up my single line fonts for even more uses. The spicy sketcher font that I used for all of the examples in this video is a freebie at my website. Check the link in the description below. And thanks for watching, nerds. May the fonts be with you.